What's up, people? So it's no surprise that the last couple episodes I really haven't enjoyed as much as I would have liked, but this episode, oh man, we have a lot to talk about, so let's get started. One thing I say and always keep... So first off, Frieza in his golden form is way stronger now. I personally thought because he had been chained up for so long that he hadn't been training, he wouldn't have gotten any stronger, but he has through mental training. Specifically, his key control has gotten a lot better, so he has a lot more stamina in his form than he previously did. As we all know, last time Frieza and Goku fought, Frieza couldn't regulate the power in his body properly. That's why he wasn't able to last as long as Goku could. But it seems like through intense mental training, Frieza has conquered that, and he is now stronger than ever. So Frieza's off killing all the assassins that were sent by Universe 9. Goku telling him to stop, doesn't want him to kill anyone, but uh, Frieza clearly doesn't listen. The the person leading this assassination was Gifted God Key. More specifically, he was Gifted God of Destruction Key. Shiroda gave him this power so he would be able to kill Frieza and they wouldn't be able to fight in the tournament. He threw a couple fake ones before he did Yamcha's Spirit Ball to pop up out of the ocean and smack Frieza with it. The energy hits Frieza and it starts dispersing throughout his body. Frieza looks like he's going to be destroyed and then he says, just kidding. And Frieza is able to take the key and mold it back into a ball and control it. Granted, it took a lot of effort for him to do it, but he was able to do it. This is insanely strong. It's so difficult that even Goku was impressed by it. Frieza, who has been tied up in hell for so long, was able to take the God of Destruction key and mold it back into a ball, even though that key should have been able to wipe him out of existence. There are not a lot of people able to control that kind of energy, hence why there are Gods of Destruction. This is really a testament to how strong Frieza really is and how much of a genius he is. Someone this strong is definitely an asset to the team, it's just a shame that it's Frieza who is incapable of helping anyone else. So here we are, Frieza holding a ball of God of Destruction key. While Goku tries to make a noble speech, Frieza just decides to chuck that back at Goku. And I mean, who didn't see this coming? Goku, it's been the thing since Frieza first came back that you let your guard down too easily, you have again, and now you are stuck in this great big energy of God Key. Frieza tells him, well, I got out of it, you should be able to get out of it, just uh, mold it back into a ball. Goku tries and it does look like he's about to do it, but then he loses it and it just goes back to him struggling to survive. Now, why did Goku not die instantly? Because Goku's still able to fight this off. He's still able to try and put it back, he's just not able to get it. Goku's sort of stuck in limbo. He's trying as hard as he can to control this energy to stop it from blowing him to pieces where it's inevitable if he's not able to control it. Frieza laughing and commenting that he must be stronger than Goku is if Goku's not able to do it when he did. So how was Frieza able to do this while Goku was not? Is Frieza stronger than Goku? No, Frieza is not stronger than Goku. If anything, he could be as strong as Goku, but he's not stronger. The reason Goku couldn't do this was when Frieza did it, he was at full strength. When Frieza molded that energy, he was in full strength. He was able to control it at his full power. Goku, on the other hand, was not. Goku was caught off guard. He was in his base form. If anything, it really goes to show how strong strong Goku is because in his base form he was able to hold off this destruction energy. Energy that wipes people out of existence. Goku is doing that at his base form and he's trying his hardest to push it back. If Goku is strong enough why isn't he turning to Super Saiyan Blue and then doing it? The Super Saiyan Blue transformation requires God Key. To channel and harness God Key you need a calm mind and I'm sure when Goku is fighting in Super Saiyan Blue he has complete control over it he won't lose it as quickly but Goku right now is in his base form and he's concentrating everything he has into making sure that this energy doesn't kill him. That kind of pressure I'm sure clouds the mind and he wasn't able to be calm enough to use the form. Now had he been in Super Saiyan Blue form when this happened, I'm sure without a doubt he would have been able to do it easy. But at this point, no, he wasn't able to and he wasn't able to concentrate enough to turn Super Saiyan Blue. So while Goku is dealing with the problem that he currently has, Frieza is off trying to get information out of all the other assassins. It looks like he kills them all already and gets a communication device to call Rao and Shirora. He hits them with a proposition, says that he wants to be recruited into their team and that he would destroy his universe to be in theirs. Lord Beros and we show up and then Frieza has to cut the communication short, so I really don't think anything's going to come from that. Lord Beros sees Goku, blows the energy off of Goku and it just blows up in the air. That's really crazy to me. Does that show that Lord Beerus is still way stronger than anybody else in that universe? Is no one really catching up to him yet? Or do Gods of Destruction just have ways of negating that power so they don't get killed by it? Beerus obviously is curious where did this energy come from. He sort of grills Frieza for it. Are you working with anyone else? Frieza is obviously trying to work with someone else, but no, at this point he is not. It's clear no one at this point trusts Frieza. Uh, Goku still needs him though for the tournament. They all need him. So Goku asks Whis if they can have a sparring match just for one minute. The deal is the first one to land a hit will win this fight. Goku and Frieza, they make a wager on this fight. Goku saying, if I win this fight, then uh, you have to be my teammate and you have to trust me as a teammate and I can trust you. Frieza on the other hand is right, if I win... 
you let me do whatever the hell I want. They start fighting, Goku's only in his base form and Frieza is in Super Saiyan Gold. It looks really cool, they're going all over the place and out of nowhere, bang, Goku's able to turn Super Saiyan Blue and I thought that looked awesome. They both charge at each other and it is a draw, they were evenly matched. They both hit each other at the same time and it looks like they knock each other out. So that's it, they're evenly matched. Or are they? Goku's obviously a genius when it comes to fighting, we all know that, we've all seen that. Did Goku estimate how strong Frieza would be and did he take that much energy into the fight? Everyone has been speculating that Goku has a new form, he's attained something new and he is stronger than everyone else. Did Goku know that Frieza was, say, this strong and he only matched it so Frieza didn't see his real strength? Just a little something for you to think about. As we know, Goku does hide his strength a lot. Is he strong enough to beat Frieza and he's just decided, Hey, Frieza, you can have this one. Uh, think that you're as strong as I am, but you're not. So that's it. The stage is set. We are going into this tournament next week. Now, do I think we start fighting next week? Uh, no, I don't, but I definitely am happy that we are going to the World of Void, that we are going to be able to see the stage set up and them walking on it. Obviously for the sake of the Warriors that haven't heard it yet, we're gonna have to lay down the rules. So that's gonna be a thing. Everyone's gonna have to get there and we'll be introduced to new characters. So I can't wait. Obviously the shorts for the next episode, we see some of the characters there. Uh, we see the stage is set. We see them standing on the stage and it is huge. I'm glad to see that this is a giant fighting arena because I would hate it for them to be in like this little enclosed space where people just accidentally fall off or they're just pushed off quite easily. You're gonna have to take this person and drag him all the way to the edge and then chuck him over. That's gonna be awesome to see. So we see some new characters popping up on the screen and uh, my attention drew to this guy. From his look and his clothes, he is from Yardrat. Yardrat is the place that Goku crash landed on after he left Namek before it blew up. The infamous race that taught Goku the instant transmission. Now we don't know a lot about how the universes work, but I'm gonna say that he's from Universe 6 just because they Universe 6 and Universe 7 are a brother-sister universe. They have the same race of people on both universes, so it makes sense that if there is a Yardratian there, he'd be from Universe 6. Obviously, that's just a guess. Don't take that as law, but man, that is gonna be awesome to see. There's gonna be someone that should theoretically move as fast as Goku does instantaneously. Now the rules specifically say that there is no flying in the ring, but it doesn't say anything about instantaneous movement. Meaning this kid from Yardrat could just instant transmission, grab someone, instant transmission, hold him over the edge and let him go. It's interesting that he pops up too, because from what we know, they are a peaceful people. Now maybe the Yardrats from Universe 6, which is where I'm assuming they're from, Maybe they are the complete opposites to the Yardrats from our Universe 7. I mean, it makes sense. The Saiyans are completely opposite to the Saiyans that we had. But Frieza and Frost were basically the same person. They're both just as evil as each other. Either way, I can't wait to see him in action. I just want to see him do instant transmission. We also see Frieza and Frost talking to each other secretively. Uh, I didn't mention this before. I think they'll team up and they'll do something. So... Yeah, that seems like it's going to be inevitable. Really exciting times coming up. I can't wait. What do you guys think of today's episode? I loved it, honestly. What do you think about Goku and Frieza's match? Do you think that they are evenly matched or Goku's holding back just a little bit? Also, what do you guys think of the Ardradian? They showed him for less than a second. The outfit is like a little bit different. He doesn't have a shoulder pad, but hey, could just be a different universe thing. If you like this video, hit that thumbs up button. I'd really appreciate it. Subscribe to my YouTube channel if you already haven't. I do have other content besides these Dragon Ball videos that I do, so if you got time, maybe go check those out. But as always, people, thank you so much for watching. I'm Sansa to me. Catch you guys next time.